game time for the untouchable true school sports. Let's go, baby. Bow. Be careful what you wish for because because it can become a reality. Yeah. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT. I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so this is a follow-up video to the video I did when I was on Venice Beach, but when when I talked about Andy Hiroka versus Ismail Barroso and gave my thoughts on it, I got my prediction right. I picked Andy Hiroka to win. I know a lot of people picking Barroso just because they, they they know him a little more, and he's a very dangerous fighter for anybody at 140 but Andy Hiroka not only did he exceed my expectations he put on in my opinion if you watch this fight against Ismail Barroso when he stopped in the, in the ninth round I think this is the kind of performance that I've been looking for since I've really been following him I mean I know he fought Jin Suzaki and beat him but I was that was really before I started paying attention to him since I've been paying attention to him he hasn't really like lit the world on fire he's been winning but you know he finally got a, a, a near opponent, a good opponent, a dangerous opponent, a puncher, and he looked nothing short of the creme de la creme, top shelf, A-plus fighter. That, that, that's what he looked at in, like in this fight, uh, using that tall, long, rangy southpaw jab. Um, then he was able to drop him with a big left hand um, in the ninth round and ultimately get the stoppage. So he puts the Barroso name on his resume, and now his resume looks pretty good. You got Jin Suzaki on his resume. You got... Barroso on his resume. He's now the WBA interim champion. So Andy Hiroka is here. Andy Hiroka uh, has announced himself to the party. Andy Hiroka has, in fact, arrived at the world-class level of the 140 division. And if you want to make anything happen in this division at some point, you got to come see Andy Hiroka. Now, let's talk about him because um, with him being the interim champion, he, he's basically the mandatory challenge for, for Jose Raya Valenzuela. Um, that could be a fight that happens um, in the near future. You know, Ra 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 Valenzuela has been linked to Tank and guys like that. And he could also wind up fighting, you know, other guys. But I, I think, um, y you know, if not Tank, then maybe he could do the Pitbull Cruise rematch. If he decides to go another route and maybe defend against somebody else, I think that would open up a lot of possibilities for Andy Hiroko. And I think as far as him getting the big big fights, because he's, he's already called out uh, Ra Ra Valenzuela. He wants that fight. Which I think would be an amazing fight. I think I think Andy Hiroka versus Ryan Valenzuela would be a, a dynamic battle of, of two, uh, I would say, boxer punchers. You know, because because Ryan Valenzuela showed him that Pitbull Cruz fight. If he needs to box, he can box. We know he can punch. Andy Hiroka, we know he can punch. Uh, he's he's knocked out two world class opponents in Jinzazaki and Barroso. So his punching power is real. His boxing ability is real. His distance control is real. A lot of things about Andy Hiroka have proven to become very very real, but um. I mean, I'm looking at the rankings. I'm looking at, you know, what could be potential fights for him. And it's really, I'm very intrigued to see what they're going to do because as far as name, name opponents, you know, maybe like Regis Progray, he's fighting Catterall. So he's like, he's, he's five. I don't, I don't see that fight being an option for him. You got some guy named Zan. I can't even say that guy's name at number seven. I've never heard of him. Roley Romero is eight. Um, I think Andy Hiroka would absolutely beat the brakes off Roley. Uh, Roley's not beating Andy Hiroka. But I don't think PBC makes that fight either, so don't you know? Don't lose your breath on that one. And then um, I think the number nine contender is probably the, the the guy that would be the most likely opponent for Andy. I'm, you know, the number number nine, ten, and eleven. Those three guys, nine, ten, eleven, which would be um, Jukumbaya, the southpaw that's been in camp with Crawford from uh, Kazakhstan, who gave Subra Matias one of his toughest fights years ago and lost. You know, I think him and again another dynamic matchup with two southpaw power punchers. Really good fight there. Julian Smith, number 11, the death boxer, the guy that you literally can't even hear. Probably one of the best stories in boxing. He beat Arrestes Velasquez. He's beat Shojahan Ergashev. One of the most legit contenders in any weight class in boxing. Got a lot of respect for Julian Smith. You know, again, that'd be a really good fight for any hero. And then um, number 10, you got Mike Quan Williams, the guy that I haven't watched as much, but I see I seen him on Pro Box. Good, good fighter, solid fighter. So I think any one of them three, one of them, one of them kind of three guys. That's probably what I would expect more from Andy Hiroka for his next fight because I think they're going to keep it PBC with Ryle Valenzuela. You're not going to see Ryle fight um, Tank next. Or if you do see him fight, he'll fight Tank next or he'll fight Pitbull Cruz as far as the rematch. Those, those, those are the kind of fights I see for Ryle Valenzuela. The only way I think that Andy Hiroka could get the Ryle Valenzuela fight, and this is where I think Hideki Ohashi and his people got to really show their belief in him, they're going to have to overpay 
uh, Andy Hiroka to get him to Japan. The same way that they had to overpay Stephen Fulham to get get him to, 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 to Japan for Naya Inoue, you had to overpay Rao Valenzuela to get him to Japan for uh, Andy Hiroka. Or maybe maybe uh, Valenzuela doesn't come to Japan. Maybe, maybe he comes to the States. Who knows if they, if they really want to do that. But, um, you know... We'll see. This is this, this, this isn't like the lower weight classes in boxing where you know the money is in Japan. This is one forty, so you know there is more money available here. The big promoters do tend to invest more money in the states in these weight classes, so um, I'm looking forward to that. And I, I'll tell you this: the, the last fight I, 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 I'd like to throw out there. I mean, I, I don't know how realistic it is because you know Andy Hiroka is with him being interim champion. He's not ranked in the WBO, but I would like to see him fight T from Lopez. If there's a way we can make that fight happen, I think that fight would be really good for boxing, but. I'll just leave it at this, man. Um, the, the Barroso fight was the exact kind of performance that I've been looking for from Andy Hiroko because, again, I've seen, I've watched the Jinzaki fight, but I wasn't like, actively following him when that fight happened. So since I've been following him, he, he's, he's been like a slow, steady, you know, good fighter, but not, not this juggernaut, not this dominant force that, you know, he's been prophesized about by a lot of the boxing experts in the boxing community in Japan. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing what's next. And, and again, I think this is the part where, Ohashi Promotions have got to do their part in, in getting him the big fights. And look, if he can't get Valence Villa, and I'll, leave, I'll, I'll end on this note, if he can't get Ryle, if he can't get, you know, Pitbull Cruz, if he can't get those big fights, then I think the most ideal move for Andy Hiroko it will probably be him versus the winner of the November 16th fight between Kenneth Sims Jr. and Oscar Duarte. That's a really good fight. You know, Kenneth Sims Jr. is on an eight-fight winning streak. If he wins that fight against Duarte, it'll be a nine-fight winning streak. He's one of the, he's as, he's as real as it comes when, when it comes to contenders at 140. Um, I think Andy Hiroka versus him would be an amazing fight. You know, an amazing fight. Kenneth Sims Jr. is a very versatile boxer. He can box. He can punch. He can move. He's been through all kinds of things in his career. So he's got character to come back from what he's come back from, you know? So I like that fight for him. And then, you know, if Duarte wins, Duarte's not as complete of a fighter as Sims, I think Duarte would actually be the much easier match of the two. But I think that's probably the most realistic move for him. Just just being honest with you, I think that's the most, most realistic move for him because, you know, with Ryo and, and, and Pitbull Cruz, these are guys that I think you'd have to pay a lot of money to to get him to come to Japan. Duarte, Sims, these guys don't have the backing behind them, the money behind them that, that, that those guys have. So I think it'd be easier to get him to Japan. But I'll tell you this. I wouldn't rule out Andy Hiroka versus Pitbull Cruz if 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 Pitbull Cruz decides to not fight Ryle next, because the link in all this is, um, what's his call it? Pitbull Cruz is is, is uh, promoted and, and and handled by Sean Gibbons, you know, Manny Pacquiao Promotions, and Sean Gibbons, and I know this from from because I you know Knuckleheads Boxing, you ain't too far from where I live, and you're in Vegas, and I, I was just there yesterday, and I know from talking to you know Brendan Gibbons and just knowing about what I know about Sean Gibbons as his involvement in boxing is they got a very strong relationship with, with, with Japanese boxing um and, and Ohashi promotions. You know, he's he's one of the reasons that he's one of the reasons that um you know I think the the, the full and in a way fight happened with Sean Gibbons and and, and and he's been a big part of a lot of things happening in Japan for his fighters. You know, he promotes a lot of Filipinos. We know Filipinos versus Japanese fighters is big in boxing. So don't rule out Pippo Cruz versus Andy Hiroka uh, happening um, in the near future. I think that's a fight for the division for sure, just because of the Sean Gibbons uh, factor in the equation. But uh, yeah, great performance from Hiroka. Star making performance, you know, definitely emerged has has emerged after that fight now for sure as one of the surefire top guys, top contenders in the 140 division. And it's only a matter of time before we get, get, get the title shot and we get to see him on that world class stage. So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What did you make about Andy Hiroka's performance a couple weeks ago? You know, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. I'm at the Boxing Hall of Fame out here in Canada Field in New York. And for more great boxing content just like this video, make sure you click and subscribe right over here.